Hello, today I'm going to talk about computer networks and give a brief presentation about the basics of computer networks. The first thing I want to talk about is some basic concepts. What is a computer network? If I had to define a computer network, it will be just a series of computers connected to share information and resources. It's that simple. It's just a, it's just a way for computers to share data and information or to communicate. Now, the different uses of computer networks are everywhere. Uh, from the internet, all those websites that, that people are using now, web, uh, Twitter, Facebook, they are all computer networks and it, they are made possible thanks to computer networks. In addition, we are all carrying two or three computer networks in our pockets these days. All the phones now are connected to different networks including the voice network, data network, the Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth. So all those different network technologies create different networks and that are connected right f in your pocket. So we have networks flying everywhere these days. The days of, uh, that a computer was alone and it was uh, separated by the others, those days are gone. Now there are different computer network models that I want to talk about. The two main ones are client-server and peer-to-peer. -peer. Now client-server is, is a model where different computers that are called clients connect to a server computer. And that server computer normally is more powerful and, it, and it, that's because it needs to receive all those client requests, process them and then send back the answers. And this, this model is very common, especially an example that I can give is when you connect to the internet and you request a web page. There are many different servers that are acting at the same time when you do a www.google.com, for example. If one of them is a web server. Your, your client computer, that is that's his, you, the computer that you're using to access that information, makes the request to the server, to the web server at Google for the web page. That web server receives it, process it and sends back the web page to you. And that's a perfect example of a client server model. Now in a peer-to-peer -peer model, uh, every computer is kind of interconnected and every computer is called peer and uh, there are no more clients or servers. Everybody's a client and everybody's a server. So the files that are stored on your computer uh, will be served to other peers and you will also uh, be able to request files from your peers and share them. A very good example of this is um, when, uh, for example, things like Napster came out the, where you could download uh, music files uh, for free in that network. And uh, that was a perfect peer-to-peer -peer example where everybody was sharing files with everybody and everybody was a client and a server at the same time or a peer. Now there is also what is called transmission technologies and this is, uh, describes how the data flows in the network. One of them is called broadcast and a broadcast is just sim is simply when the information is sent from a source to a multiple or to everybody in a specific uh, range. So that, that is called a broadcast. A very good example is when you listen to a radio station. They, many, many times they call it we're listening to a, to a broadcast. And that is because the main antenna of the radio station, which is the source, is transmitting that data to everybody in a broadcast. So that will be the perfect example. When a single transmission is shared or is sent and made available to everybody. Now a multicast is a subset of the broadcast transmission where you are sending the transmission to everybody within a group. So you are dividing that, uh, that target into a specific group or area. So let's say it would be like a, in the case of the radio station, let's say you, you are transmitting only to a city, let's say Miami or Los Angeles. So that would be a multicast. You are transmitting only to a subset of receivers. Now the other transmission technology is point to point. So that's more easy to understand and that's where you uh, connect or send information from one specific point to another one without intermediaries. 
So that information that you are sending goes to a specific receiver or point, creating a point-to-point -point link. Now we can divide uh, or classify networks by different factors. One of the factors uh, that, that is most common is by scale, how big or small your network is. You can see in the graph that you have personal area networks that are the smallest kinds of networks and they cover about one meter, one square meter in range. A perfect example to, for a personal area network pan is Bluetooth. A Bluetooth technology is, is that kind of network technology that allows you to connect, for example, those wireless headphones to your phone. That will be a perfect example of a pan area network. If you get out of the range, which is normally very short, then you will disconnect. Now you also have local area networks that cover anything from 10 meters to one kilometer. And those uh, normally cover rooms, buildings, uh, or campuses. The best example to describe a local area network or LAN is the one that you are using right now probably to see this video on YouTube. When you connect to the internet at home, you are using, you're connecting through a router or a, a, a modem. That device connects you to the internet, but at the same time it connects you to your local area network. It forms a network in your house that is local and can be accessed, can be accessed only by the computers in, in, in your room or in your house, for example, if you allow it to. Of course, it can be accessed by other people, but that's a different subject. Once you create that local area network, you are connected to it and it's classified as a LAN. Now, there are also metropolitan area networks that cover about 10 kilometers in range, and uh, they normally are for cities. And the perfect example of a metropolitan area network is like, uh, for example, your uh, cable provider. Your cable provider uh, gives or provides, to, to not to be redundant here, but provides cable services to all at the, uh, the city, and that will form a metropolitan area network. On top of that, you have the wide area networks, and those are the, the, the biggest networks that cover from 100 kilometers and beyond. Of course, the most um, famous one is the internet that covers the entire planet. Now, in addition to scale, we can also classify networks by their topology. And the name topology is just a way to say how, or to describe how these uh, different network components are interconnected. And it could be how they are interconnected physically, and how do they work or how they connect logically. So there are two kinds of topologies. And by the way, those two kinds can be mixed together. But let's talk, let's talk first about the physical. So as you can see, a, a, com a series of computers can be connected in different ways. For example, they can keep com be connected in a ring fashion, like here, one next to the other in a closed circuit or they can be all interconnected between each other without any specific uh, order forming a mesh. And also they can be connected all to a single point forming a star. Or they can have a hierarchical connection you know, from top to bottom. Or they can be connected into a bus or to each other sharing a single media or cable. Now, the physical topologies are the easiest to grasp, but there are also the logical topologies and they can be mixed. So for example, if you connect an, a, a series of computers to a hub, and the hub is a device, it's like a box, that just allows you to interconnect devices. If you don't know what a hub is, just imagine a power surge uh, connector, those things that you attach to the wall and then you attach your, your devices, electronic devices to it, so if there is like a change in voltage, they won't be affected. Imagine the hub to be the equivalent of that although if in networks. It's just a way to co interconnect different uh, computers. So when you, do, you connect computers to a hub, you are creating a physical star. But because the information in a hub travels from one computer to the other one, as if they were connected, the computers, to each other, it creates a bus logical topology. So this is the perfect example of a mixed physical and logical topology. Now finally, to conclude this uh, tutorial, this class for today, I'm going to talk about uh, other definitions that are very common in networking. 
and one of the definitions is a protocol. And what's a protocol? A protocol is just a series of rule conventions that in the case of networking, it defines how communications proceed or go. But you can see, uh, to remember what a protocol is, just imagine a protocol at work, for example. You had to dress in a certain way, you had to arrive at a certain time, you had to leave at a certain time. Those set of rules are called a protocol. Now, to uh, the subject of networking was complex, or is complex. So, in order to simplify its understanding and also its, its uh, fun functioning, the, uh, the networks were divided in different layers or levels. Each level or layer uh, encompassed a series of protocols and a series of uh, services or functions that are grouped together in that level. So, effectively dividing the different uh, aspects of the network. Again, for to reduce complexity. And those are the levels or layers. Now you also have interfaces between these layers, as you can see here in the diagram, between host one and host two. The different layers go between, uh, the different uh, interfaces go between the layers. So, and the interface are just uh, regulate what services and uh, operations can be shared or ac are accessible to the to the upper or lower layers. So, it, just for you to understand, it, they go between the layers and determine what services in the upper layer can go to the lower lower layer and vice versa. Now, protocol stack. A protocol stack is just another way to group or to call uh, a group of protocols that work together for a for a single goal. So. That's a protocol stack, just a way to group protocols. And finally, the network architecture is just a series of layers and protocols that work together. So a network archi architecture will be the whole, it will encompass everything that I've been talking about now. It's just the, the way you called a different sets of protocols, layers, interfaces, and protocol stacks to working together to send and receive information. And the final thing I want to talk about now is how that information flows in a network normally. So now that you have all those definitions with you, you can see here in the diagram that information from host one, let's pretend host one is sending a, a data to host two, travels from up to down in the layers, and it goes through the different interfaces, and finally reach the physical medium, that on this case, let's say it's, it's, a, it's a cable. And then the physical, after it reaches the destination on the physical medium, it travels to, to host two, from layer one to layer, layer five, all the way up, until it reaches host two. So you can see how inter information flows like in a U, some sort of a way. Now those uh, those uh, lines that you see between protocols are just there to explain that communication between layer five on host one and layer five on host two, for example, is seamless. So for host one in layer five, that uh, that transmission that that arrives or, com or comes from layer two uh, from host two in the same layer is the same. He doesn't know that it's going through all the different layers. So that's the beauty of it. it all the functions are isolated by layer, and each, la each layer is responsible only for their set of functions of the specific layer. And that's how information flows from one host to another one. Okay, that's all for today, uh, for this uh, class or tutorial. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, keep tuned. I'm gonna go and create a, diff a second class that will be the continuation of this one. Thank you.